And yes, I realize that me being an only moderately successful YouTube streamer, kind of like a pot kettle black situation. Like, the idea is that anybody can go on Twitch or on YouTube and do what I do and be super successful at it. Like, all you need is a computer and editing software and suddenly you're the Game Grumps. I mean, it's not untrue. Anybody could be the next big thing, but it's a little disingenuous to say that. If anybody could be a super successful YouTuber, I would be making seven figures by now. The difference between, like, what I do in these psychics, though, is that, like, we're not trying to scam people and get people to come to the channel and watch it under false pretenses. So, I'm, I was reminded of a somewhat famous psychic named Sylvia Brown. Uh, she's dead now. Thankfully, <laughs> she died, and... But she was horrible! She was a horrible person! I was like, most psychics, they'll tell you what they want to hear. Sylvia Brown, like, she started out doing that, the whole cold, uh, cold reading shtick. She eventually, like, founded her own religion and stuff, but she got famous enough and had enough of a reputation that she no longer had to tell people what they wanted to hear. Anybody who was going to call Sylvia Brown and pay her $750 for a 30 minute reading. I had to put the controller down when I said that because I'm still mad about it all these years later. How much money this horrible woman was charging for readings. Uh, yeah, anybody calling her up was a, was a true believer. Like they weren't gonna question whether or not Sylvia was real. It just wasn't gonna happen. So she would say horrible things. She used to be a regular guest on the Montel Williams show, back when Montel Williams had a talk show. Uh, so this is going back like 10 years or so. I think he's been off the air since like 2007 or 8 or so at this point. But... She used to, like... Some of the things she used to tell people, like they would... Uh, my daughter's been missing for 10 years, where is she now? And this is an actual thing she told someone on the Montel Williams show. She said, well, your daughter's still alive. She's not on the other side. She's been sold into white slavery in Southeast Asia. Why would you tell a grieving mother who has lost her daughter and is looking for some closure that she was sold into white slavery in Southeast Asia? Why wouldn't you just say, yeah, she's dead, but she says she loves you? If you're gonna lie to these people anyway, why wouldn't you tell them a comforting lie? So Sylvia Brown was like the worst of the worst. But the best reading she ever gave, she was on Montel Williams and a family had gone on to ask about their dead child. A woman had lost her daughter or whatever. And so she's sitting there with her family, with her husband and her mother and someone else. And she asks what, uh, like, we know that she's dead, she's been missing for so long, we just want to find the body. She asked where to find the body. And Sylvia gave this... Wait a minute, was this the white slavery answer? It might have been. I might be conflating two different stories. Anyway, here's the last shop. Let's see if I can upgrade all my weapons and then we will. Because we're probably going to upgrade the bubble here. Yeah. It's going to be good stuff. And then the next level is... Oh, I... Nope. Can't afford it. So we're going to... We have to go farm once. We'll go fight through this room here once and then come back. Uh, I, yeah, it might actually be. I, it might be the white slavery story, but I might be misremembering. It, might, it was horrible in any case. She told her... She told them, like, yeah, your daughter is alive, or... No, she told them, you're like, your daughter's... Either she said your daughter's alive and she's a sex slave in Asia, or... She told her something else ridiculous, like, the body is in the ocean or something. Anyway, long story short, at the time the family went on the show, the investigation... Oh, but I didn't want to jump all the way up here. Ah, oh, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I just know it. You know what, let's go back and get the... and finish powering up the bubbler, because that will help in this room immensely. The investigation into this girl's disappearance was still ongoing at the time. And a few months after they went on to the Sylvia Brown show to get closure, they found the body less than a mile from the family's home. And it turns out that the murderer... Oh, I gotta farm up hearts, too. You know what? I got plenty of lives. I'll just die. Whatever. Here, you do it. Thank you. It turns out the murderer was... 
I forget if she was the girl's father or like the baby daddy or but the man who killed the child was sitting in the audience of the Montel Williams show and Sylvia Brown was looking right at him while she told this horrible lie about white slavery if it's the same story it might not be but like wow do you need a more powerful endorsement a more powerful piece of evidence that the whole psychic thing is totally BS is there a more perfect story than the family went on Montel Williams with the murderer in the audience and Sylvia still didn't know this is the cheapest shot in the game because what happens here is you grab this jacket and you hold forward and then this light falls on you and you lose the jacket immediately and that's happened to me so many times it happened to me in my test play this morning I could probably go back now if I want because you get so much money in the office building here if I wanted to, I could go back and upgrade the flamethrower a little bit. But eh, there's not really any need. We only need it in this one room, which is turned into a refrigerator for some reason. Hey, there's the... Sweet, we got our, our free life. The life that we spent, essentially, as a, as a health refill, we just got back. Beautiful. I did not go into this video expecting to rant about psychics <laughs> for so long. But hey, it happens. Sometimes you go off on tangents. We are coming up on the final boss of Kero Blaster. We are in the last level. We are coming up on the final boss. We're going to be very careful in this screen. Because you've got those tiny black cotton ball monsters. That cling to ceilings. And if you attack them, they fire a homing shot. That's really easy to get lost in the shuffle. I'm not sure if... You've noticed this, but it's really easy to lose track of what's shooting you in this game because your own shots take up so much of the screen. We'll get these guys with the rebound. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Uh, that's one of the most important skills I would say you have to learn in Carol Blaster is, first of all, know what all the enemies do, know how you're being attacked from which angles. Because if you don't, you're going to run into a lot of situations where you, you won't understand why you're dying so much. Like this hidden guy up here, that's one of those pink bats. I know to kill him before I trigger him. And I know not to launch any shots at the ceiling here because there's all those little clingy bastards that will shoot their homing attacks. But if I use the star mine here, I can clear the whole floor and it's just wonderful. The star mine's basic purpose is they bounce really fast, they go full screen, they ricochet off walls and come back to you. So the purpose of the star mine is it's really a good fire and forget weapon. Anytime you're on even ground, like these long, just uh, featureless hallways with lots of enemies, you can just hold down the fire button and just concentrate on dodging. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this boss fight here. So that's also a cheap shot, because this boss will fire that shot before the actual fight starts. So you're thinking, oh, the fight hasn't started yet. I'm pretty safe. Nope. You will get shot, and it will suck. Oh, there goes the jacket. Well, now we're going to push her all the way back. I was hoping to push her far enough back to get that heart, but it didn't happen. That's fine, though. And yeah, we'll get this boss in two cycles. It'll be one fall. I think I'm jumping too much. The little monster that she sent out along the floor, I just need to do this. I just need to be more careful. Because obviously, the final boss of the game has many, many phases. But same thing for the second phase. Just kind of stay on the ground, push her back, she'll fire out these little robots. And then she goes into the air. But, the cool thing about this is, if you go all the way to the edge of the screen, her shots won't hit you. I don't know why I'm just jumping into her so much. But if you're all the way at the edge of the screen, her uh, her little darkness shots cannot hit you. She will come back down. There we go. That was a little that was a little safer. That time I didn't take a stupid hit at least. It's 
but I still like the star mine for this boss because you basically you fill the whole screen with the little purple balloons and the boss jumps into them and takes a bunch of damage. Uh, you can almost count on every shot you fire impacting the boss at some point provided the boss is in contact with the floor. If you want to use quad in these boss fights, it's actually a lot more difficult. I know there's a heart over here, so I'll just take that. Uh, quad takes a lot longer because it does less damage. Unless you're at point-blank range mashing the button, you're not getting the damage output of something like Starmine. And that damage output is important, but mashing the button constantly... Like, you're devoting brain cycles to mashing the button. Now you're not focused as much on dodging the boss. And you'll see what I mean. This last boss. Wow. Covering the screen in just garbage is, is this guy's MO. Oh, and he ate all my friends. Cat and little pink blob office lady. And the president are all inside the monster. But this guy is going to cover the screen with so much trash. And if you're not very familiar with the fight, you might not even realize that he's firing those shots along the ground. Watch very carefully when he lands from this jump. He sends that black, like, shockwave out along the ground. And it hides behind all the other black garbage on the screen and the little monsters he makes. And Going into the second phase now, I don't know how to fight this guy except to try to put out more damage than he's putting out, which is just get up here and hope that the platforms cooperate and that he walks into as many of your star mines as possible. Uh, this is probably not going to be a winning fight. Nope. I didn't have a clean jump there. This fight, to me, feels very, very random. If there's a consistent way to bring this guy down, I don't know what it is. But with the star mine... I mean, I went into that fight with one heart down, so... That would have been a win if I had gone into it with my full health. But the boss does stay killed. Even if you have even if you lose all of your lives and have to restart the level, any boss you've killed stays dead. So the president cat lady I don't have to fight her again. I tried to use my double jump there. Never mind. I'm not gonna explain. I took a stupid hit for no reason. And it's on me. Because I'm... I'm not a Caro Blaster world champion, basically. I've never claimed to be. I did claim to be, actually. I called up Guinness. I'm like, hey guys, I'm a Caro Blaster world champion. And they're like, what the hell is Caro Blaster? I'm like, yeah, some Japanese thing. And they're like, Japan's not real. And I'm like, what? I think we got him this time. Uh, maybe not, actually. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Whew. I was trying to keep track of where the little bastards were down at the bottom of the screen. I'm like, oh, if they don't cooperate, and I've got to make this jump, but worked out for us. If he had wasted all my lives and I had to replay that final level, there's so much money in this final level that probably a first time and maybe even a second time player who's learning this boss fight will be able to upgrade all their stuff and buy the hearts. And even buy one of those little heart jars. You get a free heart jar going into the second level. I usually use it on the boss of the third level. But for 330 gold pieces, you can buy one of those heart jars. And it gives you four bonus hearts to use. At this point, eagle-eyed viewers will notice that there are still many more videos left in this series. That's because Caro Blaster has multiple game modes. Like, we just scratched the surface of this game. It gets a lot more fun. In the dwarf fortress sense of the word fun. Which means it gets a stick and wraps your knuckles until they bleed and are useless. And then it rolls a boulder over you. And the whole time, it just makes you matter and matter and matter and matter and makes you want to come back and conquer this stupid, cruel, unfair game. And then it feels really satisfying when you finally do. That's the point 
of the hard mode that we'll get into in the next video. <laughs> Uh oh, we're about to get fired. That's too bad. No? Just flowers? Oh, well, that's nice. I mean, I'm a frog. I don't even know if frogs have a nose to smell things with, but it's a nice gesture. I do appreciate it. You knows. Or maybe you don't knows if you don't have a nose because you're a frog. That does mean, though, we're going to watch multiple credit sequences in this Let's Play. I'm not going to skip the credit sequences, even though it says press menu to skip. Not going to happen. <laughs> so I guess Studio Pixel actually is multiple people now. I guess the development of this game, he did bring in a couple of people, at least, uh, to help him make the game, which was not the case on Cave Story. To my understanding, Cave Story is all one man's work. Also, I was making hash browns yesterday, and I was heating up the oil in the pan, and I heated it, either I heated it too much, or I didn't squeeze all of the moisture out of my potatoes before I threw them in the pan, because there must have still been enough water in the potatoes that I got incredibly splashed with burning hot oil. Like, not like third degree burns, like I didn't go to the emergency room, it just kind of, it just hurt for a minute. Didn't set anything on fire, thankfully. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. But, the cool thing is, I got a splash of oil on my arm. Two little points of oil that left a little scar that is the perfect shape, size, and distance apart that I can tell people it was a snake bite. <laughs> so yeah, I got a snake bite on my arm. I survived a snake bite. I don't even know what kind of snakes there are to be worried about where I live. I see little garden snakes from time to time, and they don't bite. They just... They, they, they flee. That's what they do. They, they flee away from you as quickly as possible. Shoutouts to Steven Robertson for sponsoring this video, and to everybody who helps make my channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.